Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ferox and today I'd like to talk to you about Toxoplasma, which is a super cool little parasitic infection, but unfortunately it's come to my attention that a number of human doctors, not all of them to be fair, but enough, are telling people really stupid things about their pregnancy, like that they have to rehome their cats as soon as they're pregnant, or to not touch them at all for the whole nine months. This is something of an overreaction and just not scientific. Toxoplasma is a protozoan parasite and it likes to live in cat intestines. And it's not fussy. Those cats could be domestic cats, wild cats, or lions or tigers. And from the parasite's point of view, the whole world either consists of cats or cat food, which is just about every other mammal on the planet. Unfortunately, that includes us. And the diseases we see in humans are because the Toxoplasma parasite thinks humans are cat food. Now, symptoms in cats are pretty vague. A normal cat might only have a little bit of diarrhea, maybe a fever. They only shed the parasite for a couple of weeks and then they get on with their life. In the cat food species, you might still get fever You'll probably have muscle pain. You can often get different things going wrong with their eyes or vision. And in pregnant individuals that have been infected for the first time, you get the thing that everybody's worried about, which is abortion. Now, obviously this is a very, very bad thing and it's fairly obvious why human health practitioners would be worried about it. And that's fair enough. But just existing in the same house as a cat is not going to give you toxoplasma. Lots of vets get pregnant in their professional life and almost all of them will be tested at some point for toxo. And quite a few of them end up negative, much to everyone's surprise, considering that they've lived with cats their whole life and they're actively working with sick cats. But hygiene goes an awful long way to keeping you safe. So what are the actual risks of Toxoplasma and how are you going to get infected? Well, to start with, if you have a cat, which is why I'm doing the video in the first place, and it's infected with Toxo for the first time and actually secreting oocysts, those cysts are going to take 24 hours before they become infective. Now, they're secreted in feces. If you're cleaning up the cat poop every 24 hours on the dot, there's not going to be time for that poop to become infective. So if your hygiene's good, you're already very low risk. Some doctors have been telling people not to even touch their cats while they're pregnant. And that's really a massive overreaction because it's not cat fur that's infective. It's only cat poop. We've never isolated Toxoplasma from the fur of a cat, only its feces. And I don't know if you've ever met a cat, but most of them are not happy at all to have any poo stuck on their fur longer than is strictly necessary. Cats only shed for short periods after they're infected, and they only do it once if their immune system is normal. That means kittens are actually at higher risk of shedding Toxoplasma. Certainly much higher risk than the cat somebody's had for years and years and years. So don't ditch your cats. The more common way for people to be infected by Toxoplasma is actually through their food and water supplies. Contaminated water is a major risk factor, especially in hot, humid countries. Unwashed vegetables is also high on the list, especially from home vegetable gardens, especially when the neighbor's cat decides to poop in it. And rare meat is a significant risk factor, especially meats like lamb and kangaroo. For some reason, these species are particularly sensitive to Toxoplasma. Now, some sources would claim that everybody who owns a cat has Toxoplasma. This is not the case. It varies by which country you're in and what your lifestyle habits are, with vegetarians being less likely to have it than people who eat meat, but really it's your location that makes a difference because hot, humid conditions and countries with poor quality water supplies are much more at risk. But even in countries that are not hot and humid, 
there's a couple of outliers. Belgium and France are particularly prolific, having about 50% toxoplasma rates in their population. And they're not overly hot and humid and their water supply is pretty good. So they don't have those excuses. Compare them to, for example, the UK and the USA, which have fairly similar levels of infrastructure, and they have much lower rates of toxoplasma infection. So why the difference? Probably because France and Belgium like their meat rarer than the US and the UK. So what can you do as a human who owns a cat to reduce your risk of toxoplasma, especially if you're pregnant? Well, first of all, the simplest thing to do is to test the human. Because if your immune system is normal, you're only going to get it once. And if you've got it when you're not pregnant, you don't really have to worry. The next thing you could do is you could test the cats to see whether they've already had it. If they've already had it, and it's more than a couple of weeks ago, they're probably not going to be shedding the parasite, and so you're fine. Adult cats are lower risk than kittens. So by all means, keep the cat you've had for years, but maybe don't get a new cat while you're pregnant. That can always wait until after the busy period's done. Remember to clean the litter trays within 24 hours to minimise your risk of contamination. Obviously, wash your hands. That should go without saying. And don't feed raw meat to your cats or to yourself, but especially no kangaroo and no lamb as these are the higher risk meats. If you really want to feed raw to your cat, pick poultry meat, because poultry doesn't get toxoplasma. It's just salmonella you've got to worry about. Make sure your water's always clean and just maintain good basic hygiene. Lots of people have toxoplasma. Lots of people have picked it up long before they reach reproductive age. And most of the time, it doesn't seem to do terribly much. Although there's lots of theories about brain control and crazy cat ladies and even autism. But the fact that it's so common in the population means it's probably not doing a whole lot most of the time. It is worth knowing about, and it's worth taking some precautions. But it's by no means a reason to take your cats to the shelter and get rid of them. Nor is it a reason to not cuddle your cats for nine months. Thank you for listening to my little rant. My name is Dr. Ferox, and I'll see you next time.